but you know there's, there's some other issues there too. But but for a standard just lining load that I'm talking about here with a 15 amp breaker, most people will tell you you can't put more than 80% on a breaker, whatever that rating is. And there's nothing in the code that says I can't put 15 amps on a 15 amp breaker if I want to. Right? I mean, if I got a 15 amp rated, a rated breaker, it's rated for 15 amps. Why, why couldn't I put 15 amps on a 15 amp breaker? It doesn't even make any sense. But what we can't do is, you know, breakers are not rated for continuous duty, and that's what it all boils down to. And so if a breaker's not rated for continuous duty, then I can't put a continuous duty load on a breaker unless I compensate for it. What did I give you earlier as the number for uh, continuous duty? 25%, right? So you're telling me that, let's say a 20 amp breaker then, a 20 amp breaker times 80% gives me a number of what number? A value of what number? 16 amps, right? If I had a motor load that was 15.9 amps, oh, 15.99 amps, and I'm telling you that motor continues duty, I would take that number and I would multiply, same multiplication, but I'd multiply it this time to 125%, what would I get on your calculator? 999, right? So I'd get 20 amps, same same difference of 16 amps to be 20. So this number here and this number here are reciprocals of each other. And so what we're saying is that I don't want to put more than, because I've got a continuous duty load here, I don't want to rate, rate this breaker more than 80%, but I only do it one time. I either do it at the top against the load at 125%, in this case being this being the top. If you're looking at my say top, I mean in the WAB type of formula. The, the, the VA being the top line and the bottom line being the volts and the amps. This two right here is really kind of the, what we're talking about on the breaker side. You've got a 15 amp rated breaker at 277 volts and lighting at the top, so top bottom is what I mean. I either take my derating here as an increase of this value or I take my derating here as a decrease of that value to compensate, but I just do one or the other. So there really isn't a code section that says you can't have a 20 amp rated breaker with 20 amps with a load. You just can't have a 20 amp rated breaker with 20 amps of continuous duty load. And that's what it all boils down to. And so, uh, Ty, you can win a lot of arguments with that one. I, I tell you, this is probably the most, most often used and least understood thing out there on the trade because guys will swear it down as code rule do it all the time. But some guys argue that you know, the receptacles have to be upside down as a code rule bill ever heard that one. Uh, hospitals. <laughs> it's a long thing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, that's a whole other story. So in this case, then I've just given you kind of the roadmap of how to solve that. You got a 7200 VA worth of lighting, got 15 amps at 277 volt. So we're looking for the minimum number of those breakers that you'd have to have for that load. So it is continuous duty to tell you that. So either we're going to take the 7200 times 1.25, which is really the way I usually do it, because most of the time we have the load and we're trying to figure out how many circuits we need. So that's really kind of what we're looking at. But just don't do both. Don't take 80% on the bottom and 125% on the top, and then you're taking a double hit. Well, actually, you're, you're getting rid of it, really, because you cancel it out if you do it on the top and bottom. So if you have 7200 VA times 1.25, what does it give you? 32.4. Oh, nine thousand. You're not thousand, right? That's too much. So we have 9,000 VA in total. After we've taken our, our adjustment, then, Really, the demand on the brake circuit, on those circuit conductors, is 9,000 VA, not 7,200. Make sense? Kind of what we're talking about with that continuous duty stuff I said earlier. So 15 amps times 277 is 4,155. Or what's, 40, what's 15 times 277? So my top line here, my VA, is this number. The bottom one, though, is what? 4,155. Mm -hmm. So 4,155. Look at this as kind of as a, as a container that will hold 4,155 VAs and not a lick more, right? And I'm asking you how many of these containers do I need? Do I need one, two, three, or four? So if I divide this into the top number, what do you get? 2.16. 2.16. It's so much habit to round stuff down that's below five, but you cannot do that as a general rule on an exam. And, and there's quite a few questions out there that they're gunning for you to do just that. So don't make don't make that 0.5 a habit. Really, that only applies to service calculations under Chapter 2. Everywhere else, you've either got a different number or you're doing a minimum or a maximum. And so you may, you may round up all the time on any number in this case. But when you're doing a maximum wire capacity or maximum capacity of wire, you would round down every time in that case. 
doesn't even matter if it's a .99, it's still that's the maximum value you just calculate. So you'd have to select something smaller than that. In this case, 4155, that means that I've got two of these full of capacity, and I still got time left over, and I can't hold my hand, so I gotta put another breaker in there. So the minimum number of brand search there would be at least three. Now that doesn't mean I'd load them like that, I'd you know, split it out nice and neat and evenly so they'd be distributed across the three different circuits, but I'd have to have at least a minimum of three. So that's what that last note is there in your uh, deal there. Okay. If you went and took the 9,000 and divided it by the volts, would that not work? Yeah, yeah you can do it that way. Yeah, you can do it that way. 32.4, so basically if you do 15 plus 15, yeah. you'd still be you'd like short. You'd be short two and a half hands or whatever you have to add. Okay, so yeah. it's just, it's still all right, I got it. Yeah, and, and some people, a lot of guys do it that way, because then you're looking at amps, and that's what the breaker for handle is, and it might be a little easier mm -hmm. to visualize what's going on, so. Um, and that might be even a better way of showing it, for example. What he's saying is, that instead of doing it as a whole number here at 4155, he's just doing it as an ampacity. If, if I'm saying that, that the volts are 277, we divide that number by 277, that's gonna give us this number here, which ultimately, since your units are expressed in that number, which is 15 amp breakers, then if you do it that way, you get 2.16. Well, it's 30. I'm sorry, you get, well, you get 30, 30, yeah, whatever that 30, number would be. Just gotcha. And if you divide that by 15, then you'd get 2.16, so you'd have to have at least three breakers for it. Um, anyways, Ken, it, it, it's, uh, it's still a, a Ohm's law calculation. It's one of those things that you do a lot more often than you probably think. We'll use that, we'll use that WAV for size and overcurrent protection, size of wire, I mean there's just so many ways, you, you name it, there's probably a WAV component to it if you're doing a calculation. So it's one of those parts of, of the Ohm's Law that, that I mentioned earlier that you're probably doing a lot more often than not realizing that it's Ohm's Law and that's, that's really what I was talking about. Is that continuous, the whole key? I mean if that word yeah. continuous wasn't in there, then it would just be, then you would just use that stuff absolutely. as a bar. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be 7200 divided by 4155 or, or 277. Yep. And if they, and it, now most of the time on the German uh, exams, they're pretty clear on what's continuous load and what's not. Okay. The only time you have to really worry about it is if they give you a service that's got commercial light in it. Commercial light, unless they tell you otherwise, is going to be continuous duty. Um, water heaters and signs are the other two things that no matter what, because those by by article are listed that no matter what. A, a tank top water heater that's 120 gallons or less will always be considered continuous duty. So that's something that they expect you to kind of know. Um, and then the uh, uh, what else? Uh, motors is one that's always going to be continuous duty. What else did I say? There's a, uh, it's signs. Any kind of sign uh, circuit for uh, the requirement under 605A, which is one dedicated 20 amp circuit per you know tenant space that has a pedestrian accessible doorway. That's going to be a continuous duty load as well. And, and they give you in a different section is 1200 volt amps. So they tell you 20 amps is a physical circuit, 1200 volt amps on the service is a value that we use to compensate for it. And that 1200 VA would be 125% uh, of that number would be what you'd actually put in there. Okay. Uh, back to your, back to your, um, I know where I was, where I was where, what I forgot. The uh, example I was talking to you to use your index on. There's a question out there that has to do with a, um, an air conditioner. And they're asking you, when you have an LCDI, if with that uh, room air conditioner, or it's actually just an AC, I think they list. So it's an a air conditioner. And you either have to have what they call an LCDI, and that's exactly what they give to you, or blank installed. They give you GFCI, they give you um, AFCI, I believe, is one of them. Nothing. Or some sort of walk in. I don't know what the, I don't know what the last two are. Really, it's one of those two choices right there. I want you to use your index, okay? And I want you to answer that question for me as quickly as you can. I'm going to time you on this for fun to see how long it takes. Yeah, right. 